Okay, so for the final section, we're going to prepare the statement of cash flows using the direct method. So let's recall the difference between the indirect method and the direct method is only associated with operating activities. Investing activities and financing activities are the same. We just learned that going through the indirect method. The good news is that when we learn the direct method, all we have to do is focus in on the operating expenses. The other two are the same, okay? So there's no change with those. Let's overview the direct method. Uh, list the receipts and payments of cash for specific operating activities. More specifically, we're looking at cash receipts from customers, cash payments to suppliers for the purchase of inventory, and cash payments to employees for salaries and wages. As I said, investing activities and financing activity sections are the same as indirect method. So all we have to learn is how this impacts the statement of cash flows for the operating activities. All right, so determining the cash payments and receipts, the first thing, the best practice is analyze every current asset and current liability account on the balance sheet and incorporate related information from the income statement as necessary. So what we're gonna look at is, first of all, accounts receivable, cash receipts from customers. The beginning accounts receivable, that would be on exhibit 13-4, that was the, the balance sheet, was 330,000. That was the ending balance for 16. That becomes the beginning balance for 17. And remember, that's what we're doing for 2017. So $330,000. Plus sales. We're going to get sales from the income statement. That's on 13-3. We don't know what the cash collections from accounts receivable are. That's the unknown variable, so to speak. That's the X. And the ending cash balance we do have, that's in section 13-4. So 365, 330, let's go look. Accounts receivable, 365 is the ending, 330 is the beginning. The other thing we, we used, and we'll go right to it right now and look at the sales, sales revenue, 9,500,000. Okay, so we'll flip over to where we were right just a bit ago. Cash receipts from customers, 330, we just saw that. Accounts receivable, that was the beginning balance, which was the ending balance for the prior year. Sales revenue, 9,500,000. Less cash collections, we don't know what that is. That's the unknown variable, gives us the ending balance. This plus this minus this gives us that. Can we solve? Okay, so the formula is beginning AR plus sales revenue minus cash collections equals ending AR. Beginning AR is 330. Sales revenue is 9,500,000. Cash collections, we don't know, that's the X. And ending AR balance is 365,000. So we're gonna to try to isolate the X. We'll flip it on the right side, that's gonna make it a positive. So X, we're gonna subtract, uh, we're gonna add X to both sides. So it'll be 365 plus X on the right side and the X disappears and then we're gonna subtract 365. So 330,000 plus 9 million, $500,000 minus $365,000 equals X. Okay, so $330,000 plus $9,500,000 minus $365,000. So according to my calculations, X equals 9,465,000. That would be the cash receipts from customers. Should we go check? We'll move forward, we're moving forward now. Cash receipts from customers, 9,465,000. We'll do one more and then the rest uh, you can kind of figure out on your own. 
actually the cash payments for inventory is a little bit a little bit more complicated there's two two processes to get the cash payments for inventory the first thing we need to know is well what was the purchases the purchases how much inventory did we purchase then once we know how much we purchased then we have to figure out well how much cash did we pay for those purchases so to come up with the first part is how much do we actually purchase in inventory well we're going to take our beginning inventory balance which was 657000 plus purchases, that's the unknown variable. We're gonna subtract from that the cost of goods sold, which we can get that from the income statement. And then that should give us the ending balance of inventory, 632,000. We're gonna solve for the unknown variable, okay? Let's do that. Cash payments for inventory. So beginning inventory plus purchases minus the cost of goods sold equals ending inventory. Uh, the beginning inventory was uh, 657,000 plus X, we don't know what purchases is, that's what we need to get. Minus the cost of goods sold, which comes from the income statement, 7,125,000. And that's gonna be equal to 632,000. Now we're gonna solve for the X. Number of ways we can do this, uh, we can move, isolate the X, it's a plus, so that in essence means we'll take the 632,000, we're gonna subtract, we're gonna subtract 657,000, And then we're going to add to that 7,125,000. Well, 7, so 632,000 minus 657,000 plus 7,125,000. 7, wait, how much is that? 7,100,000. So this is what was purchased. 7,100,000. Seven million one hundred thousand. That's what's there. All right. So now that we have that, we can use the second formula to come up with the cash payments for inventory. We're going to use the beginning accounts accounts payable balance, two hundred eighty-five thousand, plus the purchases, seven million one hundred thousand. That's what we got up here. We'll use X here, and then the ending is two forty-five. 245,000. So this would be cash payments, cash payments of inventory. So we're looking at 285,000 plus 7,100,000 minus x equals 245,000. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing we did in the, for way up here, what was that? Oh no, over here. Use the same logic here where we're solving for this x. Okay, we're gonna uh, take 200, uh, we're gonna add 285,000, we're going to add um, seven million one hundred thousand, and then we're going to subtract two hundred and forty-five thousand, and that leaves us cash payments of inventory of seven million one hundred and forty thousand. Let's go check that. We're going to go forward all the way to the statement of cash payments. Cash payments seven million one hundred forty thousand. That is a negative. That's a negative amount. So that's cash payments. The, the first one was positive because it's cash receipts. The second one is negative because it's cash payments. 7,100,000, which is what we, come up, we came up with here. All right, uh, after inventory, the next one is cash payments for insurance. And I'm, an, I'm not gonna go through the computations for each one of these. They, 
you can use what we just did for the first two and and pretty much figure out how to get to where we need to be. But the beginning balance for prepaid insurance was 15,000. We're gonna to add to that the payments for insurance, which we do not know, so that's the unknown variable. We're gonna, uh, that becomes the X. Uh, less insurance expense, we get that from the income statement of 25,000. And then our ending balance is from the balance sheet, that's 20,000. So this 15, plus this minus that will give us this. Well, we want to isolate the X. We're gonna go through that same process we've done before. Um, we can take the 20,000, 20, we'll subtract the 15 and then add the 25, and that will give us 30,000 dollars. Now it is a payment, so it'll be a negative 30,000, that's money that's gone out, okay? We're gonna do the same formula kind of computations, cash payments for operating expenses, interest expense, you can go through that uh, individually. We just did the insurance, I guess we can go through this. Okay, so cash payments for salary and wages, beginning wages payable, 48,500. We're gonna to add to that what was the expense, 580,000. We're going to subtract for that the payments that were made, which is the unknown variable. And then the ending balance was 57,000 for wages payable. So solve for this amount. And that should give us 571,500 negative. We'll go to interest expense. The beginning interest payable, 8,000 plus interest expense, 60,000, less the payments for interest, that's the unknown variable, and any balance interest payable, 3,000. Solve for the unknown variable. Solve for the unknown variable, and then that means that interest expense is negative 65,000. Payments for income tax, Beginning income tax payable, 120,000. Income tax expense, 401,700. Less payments for income taxes, unknown variable. Ending balance, income tax payable, 146,700. Solve for the unknown variable. So income tax is 375,000 negative. And then operating expenses, Beginning other accrued expenses payable, 28,500, plus other operating expenses, we have that on the income statement, $230,000. Less payments for other operating expenses, that's the unknown variable, and the any balance of other accrued expenses payable is 15,500. Solve for the unknown variable, you should get negative $243,000. Well, you should get 243,000 and then you know that that's a payment, so that's a reduction of cash. After we have solved for all of these operating activities, we now list each one of these on the direct method statement of cash flows. We sum up all of these changes and we'll get net cash provided by operating activities of 1,040,500. Note that is exactly the same number we came up with using the indirect method. So it's the same number, it's just a different, different way of presenting the information. This is much more detailed and gives much more information associated with the cash flows than the indirect method does. So in fact, joint accepted accounting principles actually recommends this method. It's never used, but it's recommended. You'll notice the investing activities and financing activities, they're the same. They haven't changed at all. They remain the same. Everything else remains the same. Okay, just to go back one slide, by analyzing the current assets and current liabilities accounts, we see that cash flows from operating activities totals 1,040,500, which was the same as the indirect method. And investing activities and financing activities sections are exactly the same under both methods. Okay, so that concludes our chapter 13. Uh, best wishes and I hope you're keeping safe.